Mm. All right, I think, yeah, okay, mm. we have one more minute. Okay, all right, so I think it's about time to start. Uh, <coughs> so the lecture today will be about uh, the very first lecture of a series of lectures covering codes in particle physics and astroparticle physics. So some of these lectures I'll be the one given, but as we had already last week, someone talking about Medigraph. Later on, we're going to have also someone else giving talks about uh, SARA and S Model S. And I'll also give, for instance, out of this list, as you can see in the very first slide, there are codes called LUNHAP, which is the one I'm going to talk about today. There is one called CALCHAP, MICROMEGAS. These, threes, these three codes, I'll be covering them. And there is also this uh, PPC 4DM ID in blue, which is a code for uh, gamma ray searches in the context of dark matter. It's a code that computes the energy spectrum from uh, dark matter models. This one in pink, this LFP and G minus two is a code I wrote which computes new physics contributions to G minus 2 and lepton flavor violation is based in Mathematica. And <coughs> so, MedGraph, we had already one lecture, but we're going to have a second one showing how to exactly implement models. And test you briefly cover cosmic transitions, but there's still a few other lectures to go. So as I said in the very beginning, S Model S and SATA uh, will be covered uh, in the beginning of May. And I'm also going to talk about Collider Reach, which is this one in orange, which is uh, a, a very easy code to use just to have a rough estimate of the high luminosity and high energy LHC reach of a given uh, new physics model. Okay. So, so far, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. All right. So there is also this code Vivacious. I'm still trying to find a lecture for, for this. So it's a code where it computes the vacuum at one loop level. So it's a highly non-trivial <laughs> thing to do. So as you can see from the very first slide, this, this is not a comprehensive list, okay? So you can see there are very there are many many codes that you need uh, in particle physics and astroparticle physics. This is a very short list. So I'll say that these are the the main ones that we use today when we are really in, the, in, co in connection with particle physics. So there are many. So it's, it's very hard to cover all of them, and I do not know all of them. But I'll at least I'll be covering the ones I know. So <coughs> some of them they have their shortcomings and the pros and cons, but I'll discuss them as I go along. So today, as I said, I, I'm gonna describe the LANHAP code. So the LANHAP code is simply a program to generate final rules. As you remember in the standard model, we have usually people have this uh, very simple shirt with the Lagrangians of the standard model, which is given by the kinetic term of the gauge fields, the f mu nu, f mu nu, and then the kinetic term of the scalar of the sorry of the fermions psi covariant derivative psi, and then also the third term 
here would be psi y i j psi phi which is like a shortened version of the Yukawa Lagrangian and the the other term is the <coughs> covariant derivative of the phi doublet phi being the Higgs doublet in that case however this this is a very simplified version of the standard model and is not even even complete to be honest the other terms which are not there but it's just to give an idea and these terms when you have to open them write them explicitly gives rise to many 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 terms especially the term f menu f menu is quite tricky so the final rules mean is trying to extract the vertex between three particles or four particles interactions okay which is non-trivial especially the ones involving gauge boson so it's very hard so it's d-shirt is a very very i'll say simple and a bit misleading way of representing the standard model of particle physics so if you write down explicitly the Lagrangian, the shirt should look like this. So instead of the uh, previous way. So there are many, many terms involving gauge bosons and, and, and scalar fields which are there. So however, remember, so these there are many, many terms. And to extract the the diagrams, the Feynman diagrams and as well as the Feynman rules, for each one of them and get it right is is a non-trivial task especially if you're talking about theories beyond the standard model in the standard model is it's simple except the f mu f mu term which is quite lengthy it's simple but it's lengthy and it's, if you make a mistake in a you know in a sign you get a minus sign wrong you you you're gonna end up with wrong results at the end so LANHAP is very useful in that sense because it helps us to extract the final rules of any theory beyond the standard model okay so that's that's the purpose so so far so good everyone any questions so far um, this, I have this one. okay Final rules comes from a different kinds of, of Lagrangian, right? Right. Yeah, so that's the okay. Okay. All right. So, friends, just to remind you, if if, uh, if I go back, so friends, the vertex between the fermion and the Higgs, which comes from the Yukawa Lagrangian, is proportional to the mass of that fermion over the Vav. So that's what the final rule I'm talking about. So it's getting exactly that term. Besides the, the constant coefficient that comes in front of the Lagrangian, I also want to get the final rules itself. When you have scalars, it's easy, but when you have gauge bosons involved, you also have this Lorentz structure, which involves g mu nu plus minus g mu nu contracted with gamma mu and so on. So all these things have to be contracted in the right way with the correct signs and you cannot mess up so that's why we need a code like this if you're dealing with very simple uh, extensions of the center model maybe unhap is not the the way to go you can just implement your new Lagrangian into the uh, the rule the tools I'm gonna talk about later in another in another day but if you have a complicated model, you need LANHAP, I think. So, in order to do to install LANHAP, is very simple. So you access that link there in red, which is was developed by Andre Semenov. So you go there, and then that's exactly the print screen of that website. And and. And you go there to the sources files where you can find many versions of LAMHAP. And and there you friends uh, I you can download the 400, which I think is the current version. It was updated in January 16th. So it's 
quite recent and has been further improvements about the UFO output but I'm, I'm gonna talk about them later anyway so you just go there to this one of these links where they have the sources and you download them and that's it okay so there's the first step first step you go to this website and download the file uh, <clears throat> once you download that file so uh, for instance I downloaded that file under that folder called Kusu okay and <clears throat> here it is that's the f that's the file in red LHAP 400 so you then you untar that file which is just to, just to extract the file that's very easy and then you press enter and there you go you have your folder already in blue colon have 400 that's not it to install the program so you need to do further things so the second thing you need to do is once you have that folder on you go to that folder in blue so I do a CD LANHAP 400 go there as you can see you have all these files there .c is, is C based program then you all have all of them however to implement models and generate final rules you need a executable file which is called LHAP to do to get that file I'm gonna show you so you just type make to get this HAP file you type make so uh, just to remind you I just so far up to this point I simply downloaded LANHAP entered into that folder and that's it now I'm gonna type make once you type make enter then this file LHAP is generated see I'm gonna go back one slide this LHAP file is not there now you have lots of these dot o files and lhap file okay so you can clean many of these point o files but i'm not going to talk about them let's let's keep it simple for now so now i generated this ex executable file lhap so what i do now is show you what kind of files i have on hap so what kind of model so within this folder called MDL in blue I have all these models that comes with LANHAP already installed so if I go I give an LS in this folder called MDL then you can see all these point MDL files which is the output the natural output for a program called CalCap and Micromegas so LANHAP already has these files for you and each one of these files they have something inside some of them is just QED some of them are some part of QCD only but the one I'm gonna focus on today is the standard model so the standard model file has is implemented in this file called stand.mdl so in that file you have the standard model in it so what I do is I open that file I just type G edit stand MDL and then you open the file and that's the file I have here in your screen so that file starts like this so in the very first lines you have to define what kind of gauge you're talking about or you want to discuss so you want to discuss a, a given general Feynman gauge or you want to go to you want to work on the unitary gauge so you define so for instance I usually I've never worked in a in a gauge which is not unitary to be honest so I usually just set in the very beginning here key gauge in line 5 equal unitary so which is given for instance in line 10 so is what just to let you know is what this stand MDL file has is he has many things I'm gonna explain to you right now but some of them are like if the gauge is, is the Feynman gauge do this if not 
do, do this something else. So always there are if clauses throughout the, the, the program to determine what the program is supposed to do, whether you, you had cho chosen Feynman gauge or unitary gauge. Okay, so any questions so far? No. Okay, so if you have any questions, just say, okay? Shout and we're gonna try to address it. Okay, so usually LANHAP has these definitions where they reduce gamma 5 to 0. I, I can explain this later, but if, for instance, there are some shortened versions for the gamma matrices. For instance, instead of writing gamma 5, he just says G5 is the gamma 5 matrix, and that goes for also for the, for the Dirac matrices. So it's just G mu, it would be the the Dirac matrices, matrices. Okay, so <coughs> this file in line, this command line in, in the line 19, it just says use standard model text. That that program is like a MDL file. That MDL file has simply the LaTeX format for the particles. So, for instance, W plus has W, and then uh, for instance, what do you put? For instance, you put a plus and you subscript plus. So that's how you want. You want underscore, not whatever. You want to do it with a gauge boson. So you just how you should write the latex format of those particles. So instead of writing WP as plus, you put a plus sign, and that's it. So nothing uh, uh, complicated there. And then the program really starts, I mean, to be honest. Uh, and then we, we start with the parameters. So you have these parameters are things that you can change, okay? So when you implement this MDL file into CalcHab, which is, we're going to cover that in a different lecture, you can change these parameters to any value you want, okay? So if you set whatever as parameter, it means that you can change the user can change that value. So for instance, in line 23, you have sign Weinberg, and then you can change it to a different value. So for instance, this value is 0.47, which I think is outdated, then you can change it, okay? So there you go. So you have cosine Weinberg, you go to line 28, cosine Weinberg, this, these values here between uh, 24 and 26, lines and line 30 and 32 is just the angles of the CKM matrix okay that's all so I'm just defining parameters in the center model so if you go to that the I'm just sc scrolling down the the, the the file and then you f you find the line 34 which is ask the user whether you want the CKA matrix to be 3 by 3, I mean, considering 3 by 3 means obviously the CKA, CKA matrix is 3 by 3, but what the program is asking is whether you want all the angles to be implemented or you want just to forget about the flavors and they just take the CKA matrix to be diagonal or you just want to consider flavor between two families. So that would be CKM dimension equal to, like, like in line 50, or if you just want it to be diagonal, then you do in line 58, CKM dia dimension equal 1. So you got to choose, okay? So you can define in the very beginning as key, as a key, as a key like, let me go back, as a key, see here in line 6, key CKM dimension equal 3. So if I'm defining this equal 3, so he's gonna use the CKA matrix as a 3 by 3 matrix considering all the angles. If I had defined this equal 1, then I would just take CKA matrix to be equal 1. I would not be considering the flavors between the quarks, the mixing. Okay, so once you, you're done with that, then you start so as you can see so far, I just defined parameters, that's all. So you start with the parameters, 
and then you go here for it up to line 55 56 or something you just define in programmers and then you start in the line 65 actually defining the particles so it starts with the gauge field you don't need to start with the gauge field but it's just starting with the gauge field so we call vector that's how it defines is that it's Lenhap has its own language okay so it says vector vectors are for the standard model a photon z g gluon and w plus w minus so as you can see there w plus and w minus the plus sign is just put it plus there you don't have a uh, uh, subscript or or upper script sign but you can do that in that file called stand text as i showed you in the very beginning here in the line 19 okay but okay fine so you can so far i just defined parameters and now i'm gonna start defining the particles one thing that's very important for lanhap is that you assign a plus or minus to whatever particle which the antiparticle is different from the particle so for instance you can see for the photon and the z they have the same symbol so they do not have a a capital a or a small a they are exactly the same if you define them in a different way lanhap will assume that they are not derived particles or they are not particles they are just assume that the particles are different from the antiparticles if you define them in the same way I mean these are gauge fields so there is no Dirac or Mariana particle there but if you define them in the same way Lanhap is just automatically assumes they are the same particle particle antiparticle makes no difference so if you define the W plus and W minus then automatically knows that you have a charge you don't you don't define the particle yet the charge of the particle but you just know that W plus and W minus are different particles but they do have the same mass as defined in the line 69 so W plus and W minus have particles and antiparticle so when you implement for instance the output of this program into CalCap you're gonna see two columns one column is for the particle and another column is for the antiparticle and that's what you do so on top of defining the symbol of the particle you also have to determine whether is uh, uh, the mass of the particle the width if it has a mass has to have a width okay calcap does needs and sorry lunhap needs a width for the particle if it has mass needs a width so for instance in the line 66 you can see that the photon does not have a width defined because if it doesn't have mass I don't need to define a width okay you can set the width to be zero if you want but you have to define it anyways if you included the mass so for instance if you take line 67 I define the mass for the Z so I have to define a uh, width also for the particle and the assignment gauge at the very end is just saying that's the gauge bottom any doubts so far any questions yeah, I, ha I have. Okay. Uh, because this is the MDL archive from the Lanhap, but you say that there is some relation between them and the, uh, this one and the those different archive MDL of the CalCap, right? Mm -hmm. So I I want to know if you will uh, explain how we get there. Because how? There we have you mean how to implement these MDL files into CalCap? Yes, yeah, so yeah, so we'll do this, but in a different lecture, not today. Ah, okay, nice, thank you. Okay, all right, so, fine. Notice that this, these lines that I just explained between 50, 65 and 70 are within this gauge fixed equal final. See? But anyway, it means the same. So, for instance, if you had to find them something else, like is the unitary gauge, then it, that's the same thing you have there but anyway 
now you define the, the gauge bosons now you have to define also the spins the spinners and for the spinners then you have the neutrinos the, uh, in the line 81 you have the neutrinos see when as soon as you put this command called left Lunhap understand that guy is just a left-handed particle okay so you you won't include a mass term for it and for the electron so you have e1 so notice that this e1 in the line 81 the e1 the electron does not have a mass there included okay so it's just by default <coughs> is like a <coughs> the electron is massless in one in land half okay so if, when you implement them in a program called i don't know let's say what what is going to be micro megas or or calcap or mad graph is going to understand that the electron is massless because you did not define the mass of the electron but it would be easy to do so i just have to between these parentheses in the electron include a mass me1 for instance equal half mev half mev and that's it so all particles masses here are in gv units okay so pay attention to that the same goes for the width so all of them are in gv units okay so i define the neutrinos i define the charge leptons these names here which are uh between in, in pink so friends these are exactly the labels they're gonna carry in calc hat okay so that's exactly the name you're gonna have there anyways uh, okay let me see now you go to line 85 you have these spinners but these spinners now are the quarks the quarks now you define them as color 3 c3 again why you do this because you do have a column in calc hat where it requires the color information whether it's a triplet or whether it's a singlet okay if it's a singlet you just don't define it if it's a triplet then you put color c3 that's all so as you can see in the line 85 and 86 masses are not are not included for the u and d quarks so the u and d quarks in calc hat if i use that the, that file to put into calc hat then the u and d quarks will be massless so you have to implement that so again it would be easy so inside the parentheses you just have to put include a line called something the same way as the line 87 saying mass mu equal this and mass mu equal this so 2 and 4 mev roughly so that's what you do so as you can see none of them have width so because they do not decay and then for the line 89 for instance for the top quark and then it has the width for the top quark right there <coughs> okay fine so for the scalar quarks uh, you have the Higgs only so you have just the certain model so you just define HH notice there that the h h is the same so i'm saying that the higgs is its own antiparticle right is the h here is not the higgs doublet is the higgs field so is is a real is killer so it's its own antiparticle okay so i don't have to define h and small h or whatever so for instance to give an example uh, if I had a charge scalar there in that model, then I would ha start the line 93 as a scalar H plus bar, just like the line 77 for the W boson, then bar H minus, and then I'll define Higgs P, whatever, or, or Higgs 1 or Higgs 2, just to say that's a different Higgs, and mass of that particle. And the weight of that particle you might ask but for now though I, w I don't know the weight of the new particle I just introduced because I mean I didn't calculate it yet 
so I don't know the width is there is no problem so we can we can compute that width later just put in a number whatever it is around 1 to 3 GV and you're fine CalCap for instance uh, is, is one of the advantages of CalCap it, it can compute on the fly while you running the program automatically the width of the new particle you just introduced so you don't have to keep checking the width of that particle we computing again as you have to do for math graph so and then you define the multiplets so you have the doublets so here in the line 95 to 101 so here is just defining the quark doublet okay so let L1 equal this and let capital L1 equal this so it's just defining particles and anti particles why I'm doing this the reason why CalCap does this is because when you write down the Lagrangians you have to explicitly put in capital L or small L you cannot simply define, uh, for instance, electron one bar. So it's not like the Lagrangian. You write a bar and then it's already knows the antiparticle. You have to define the particle and the antiparticle in that way. Okay, fine. So you define the doublet. So as you can see, sorry. So in the doublet, so in the line 99 to 101, you have the standard model doublet, right? So for the quarks. And you also have on the right side this Q1, A, Q1, 2, 3. These ones involve the mixing. So as you can see, the difference between Q1 and Q1A is that the D is now a composition of D, S, and B, which is when you take into account the CKM matrix. So if I, when the very beginning, I I set the CK matrix equal 1, LANHAP will never use Q1A, we'll just use Q1 in the Lagrangian. So if you had selected CK matrix equal 3, then we would use this K, Q1A. So you're going to see there down below when I scroll down exactly when he calls Q1A or Q1. Okay. It depends on the assignment you had for the CKA matrix in the very beginning. So then on going to line 103, then you have the definitions of the gauge bosons. Notice these are the symmetry fields. The B1 is just the B field of U1 gauge group. Gauge group. W3 is the W1, 2, and 3 are the gauge bosons of SU2, the symmetry fields which are written in terms of the massive eigenstates which are the Z and A the Z boson and the photon ok, it's just rewriting them why I'm doing this? because at the Lagrangian level what we have is not Z and A the covariant derivative involves the symmetry fields which are W1, 2 and 3 and B1 in that case so you just, when you put that one half will automatically substitute these expressions in, in the equation in the line 103 to work out the interactions involving these mass eigenstates. So <coughs> here, this this part I'm going to skip is just involving if you had a different Feynman gauge, then you have to also to in include the Goldson bosons, but I'm not going to include them, and then skip to uh, I'm gonna skip to line 116 which is just defining a multiplet of it's not really a multiplet it's just a way of calling uh, instead of writing w1 2 and 3 explicitly each one for instance you can think of writing the covariant covariant derivative as we write as uh, tau a w a where a is summed from 1, 2, 3, as we, when we write the covariant derivative, then I'm going to write tau a w w1, which is called in the line 116, a, where a, sorry, where a goes through a1 w1, a2 is w2, and a3 w3. So it's just a way of summing 
the uh, the indices okay just writing W as a multiplet and the line 118 sorry 118 then you define the gauge coupling so we you already have to know what how the gauge couplings are related to the constants in your theory so you define them in, in that line any questions so far? Okay. So, and then I go to the kinetic terms of the gauge fields, which are the F mean U. But as I said in the very beginning, you don't have just the F mean U of U1, you also have the F mean U of SU2, which is there, and you also have the F mean U of SU3. So the F menu of U1 is the 100, the, in the line 127, the SU2 is the 134, and of the SU3 is in the middle, 130. So these are the kinetic terms of the gauge field. So if you do doing on your own, taking a piece of paper and writing the, trying to extract the vertices of these things, you're not gonna come out with less than I don't know 20 pages, 25 pages in your hand. So and that's what you do: five lines, six lines of code. So that's the power of LearnHap. And you know for sure that you're getting it right. I mean, at least it's much easier to spot a mistake in these six lines than writing 20-something pages of gauge interaction. Okay, so as you have the SU2L cross U1, uh, <coughs> you, in, in order to get the masses of the gauge of the fermions, you need to write down the, <coughs> the Yukawa Lagrangians, right? But that these interactions are very e straightforward to get, as, as I'm going to show you later on. And these same fermions also have these kinetic terms. This kinetic terms is written, for instance, one of the kinetic terms is written the the line 142, which is that one. So you can see this common line anti psi exists. So psi would be the lepton doublets that I just defined before. Okay, L1, 2, and 3 are the lepton doublets, and Q1, Q2, and Q3A are the quarks doublet for the three generations including the CKA matrix or the mixing angles of the CKA, CKA matrix if you didn't want to include them you just write Q1, Q2 and Q3 so you just remove the A out of that and then you just take the CKA matrix to be equal 1 alright so fine and then <coughs> as you can see here in the line 142 you have the usual Remember, you, these fields are left-handed, so you have the anti-psi there, which is gamma mu, 1 minus gamma 5, is just extracting the, the projector operator out of the equation. Then you have the derivative term, which is i, that you have the derivative, and then minus g, see here, now the sum, Tau PM WW is the sum where tau PM involves the 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 poly matrices and WW is that multiplet involving the gauge boson. And then you have Y, the hypercharge, G1 and B1. Remember that G1 and G have been defined previously in the previous slide in relating to the electric charge and the sine Weinberg. So that's what you do. So for each one of these lines, I have to define what the hypercharge is. So that's a way of how to compress all the Lagrangians, all the kinetic terms involving the leptons and the quarks into one thing. Left-handed. For the right-handed, you have to write a separate line. Well, I could have just written everything here in the line 142. But if I do this, if I had tried to do this, would be a mistake. The reason is because, as you know, the 
the hypercharge Y of the left-handed fields and the right-handed ones are different. So I could not just take, so for instance, this one in blue, the line 153, and put together with the line 142 because the hypercharge of the left-handed fields and the right-handed ones are different. Okay, so I'm done with that, and then you go to the SU3. Now we include the quark gluon interaction. In the quark gluon interaction, you have again the kinetic terms now involving the quarks Q1, Q2, and Q3. As you see, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are the quark doublets. Q1, Q2. Q2 and Q3, as you can, let me just go back to show you here, line 99 to 101, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are the quark doublets. And then you have the interaction with the gluon, where the gluon here, G, in the line 168, you can see the G there, this 168 gluon, I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. Where had defined the gluon, you can see in line 76. The line 76, I have the gluon over there. Okay, so everything I used after I ha it has to be defined previously. So you have to define things as you use them. Some it's, it's really tricky to solve a problem in one half if you just misidentified something. Or you didn't define something that you should have, so it's quite tricky to to fix the problem. It doesn't say that for instance in line da da da, you got that wrong. You will just report an error, and you have to figure out where it is. Okay, in the line 178, then you have the Higgs doublet defined. Notice this Higgs double is defined after spontaneous symmetry breaking. You don't the Gaussian fields have been already extracted, and you have just the Higgs field there and the VEV. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> and then the light, the line one eighty four. You have the Yukawa Lagrangian for the quarks. Involving all of them, see you can see are the quarks with isospin minus one half, and then the line 197 you have for the quarks with isospin plus one half, and then you have for the leptons with isospin minus one half. As this is the Higgs, this is, this is the Okawa, these are the Okawa Lagrangians. I do not have them for the uh, leptons with either spin plus one half as the neutrinos are massless in this uh, model. So that's all you have. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so just to, to focus in one of these terms, okay? So let's focus on the, on the lepton term. So line 204. So you have here M minus bar MW, so it's just a way of writing, this M is defined here in the line 206, see here? So this is the mass of the Fermi that you're talking about. And then you have, notice, in the line 206 and 207, is not including the electron, it's just the mu and the tau, because in the very beginning I have a stress that the electron was considered to be massless in one half, okay? But you cannot, you can simply change that. It's very simple. Fine. And then you have this: the mass of the Fermi divided by the mass of the gauge boson. This thing is related to the valve, okay? So you're just rewriting everything. Okay. And then the square root, the square root of two. That's how this function is defined, okay, square root of 2, that's how you write square root of 2 in one half. And then G, and then you get the anti-lepton doublet, PL. I'm defining what PL is, I can define this to be whatever I want. 
be any letter okay as long as I define afterwards what they are and then one one plus g5 which is the gamma 5 matrix over 2 so this is the right handed part and then and PR PP so what PR and PP are PR is the here defined E2 the right handed component of 2 how do I know the right handed just because I have written explicitly the 1 plus gamma 5 so in LAMHAP you have to write explicitly the projector the projection operators it does not work out that for you you have to include them and then you have the PP where PP was defined in the line 178 in the on the top of this slide which is the Higgs doublet and then you do the same thing for the left-handed part okay, so you have the left-handed and the right-handed part okay and that's it and then here in the line uh, 211 at the, at the bottom of this slide you have the pp minus v squared over 2 what it, what that is does anyone know recognize what that is it's a different way of writing something which is quite well known does anyone know so lambda think about it, lambda pp is the higgs doublet squared minus v squared So guys, this is simply the the potential. Okay. So so far, I have covered. If I go from the very beginning, so just going very quickly this time. So I started defining defining in the very beginning, and then defining parameters. From defining parameters, then I started defining the gauge boson fields in the bottom. Define the gauge boson fields, then the spinners. And then I define the doublet, okay, the spinner doublet. And then I just wrote this multiplet of gauge bosons in a smart way to to comp to so to allow me to write down the Lagrangian terms in a compact form. And then I have the it's like the standard model. I have to have the Fermi content, the gauge boson content, the parameters defined. Then I need to, to have the self interaction of the gauge bosons. After having the self interaction of the gauge bosons, I have to add the kinetic terms of the left handed and the right handed fields, both for leptons and for quarks. After I do that, I define the gauge boson, the Higgs boson. So, for instance, the Higgs the scalar here in my theory. After having the scalar, then I can write down the Lagrangians, the Yukawa Lagrangians for them, both for quarks and for leptons and then the only thing left now is the Higgs boson potential okay so I have to write down the scalar potential that's how you do it so look this is after spontaneous symmetry breaking as you can see already in line 178 I, I do not write this usual term which is mu mu phi dega phi lambda phi dega phi squared I already replaced what mu is after spontaneous symmetry breaking, so I can rewrite everything in terms of lambda and the vav. So that's what line 211 is, is stands for. Okay, so after I do that, then I have to get these two terms together. So you can see here <coughs> the the term for instance, having the scalar of the phi of the Higgs doublet, I have to also write the phi dagger d phi, which is this term here, in cn. So you can see it there. And after that, you're done. So there are some gauge fixing terms, which for instance I will, will not cover them. I'm just assuming that the gauge is unitary to simplify our life. But that's all you have. So you have the define just from the very beginning you have to define the parameters you have in your theory the content of your model which is based separated in two in fermions and gauge bosons 
these fragments can come as quarks or leptons and these quarks you have to write the Yukawa and all the kinetic terms for them the same for the leptons and you also have to have a scalar field in order to give mass to these fermions and gauge bosons the scalar field in the center model is the Higgs doublet and then since you have a Higgs doublet you have to write down the Yukawa Lagrangians and on top of that you have to write down the scalar potential of that phi as well as its kinetic term which is given this point over there okay and then you're basically done the very last lines 255 and, two, and 254 are simply to one is just to set an angle so I'm just writing cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared you have to really define these things explicitly and in the line 255 you, what you do is you check in if your model is consistent with the electric charge what LANHAP does is check if all the terms, all the Lagrangian terms you have written uh, conserve electric charge in the line 256 you check if the, all terms you have written are Hamiltonian conjugate okay so you have them right if they don't then it's easy they say Hamilton conjugate missing for electric charge it's not will give you a default I don't remember the warning message it gives you it gives you an error and say exactly what the error is is in the electric charge on the Hamilton conjugate and says the term which is missing precisely the term which is missing so this term here does not have a Hamiltonian conjugate so that's basically what LANHAP does so okay now let's see that remember everything that this file is 10.mdl is within the MDL file so I'm going to just go back there remember we are here in Kusu LANHAP after I install LANHAP and then you, I type to make and then I generate that L dot LHAP file and then when I do that let me just go back to the very beginning so you can see what I'm talking about here so I'm here in Kosul unhappy and then you have MDL folder so this is that file stand MDL this is the file that we we've been staring for the past you know 20 minutes or so and that's the, the file over there if I want to generate the final rules for that file I just type dot bar l hat this folder here this name here and then the name of the file I'm talking about in that case it'd be dot l hat stand dot mdl that's what I would do so I'm just gonna break the, the protocol a little bit I'm gonna open uh, one. Fernando, yeah. May I may I add something? Yes. Uh, when uh, when you are creating the file, right, the MDL file with the Lagrangian, it's a good idea to also check whether the masses are correct. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, it it would it's not really necessary for the standard model, but if I mean that uh, if you are writing a new model, yeah, there is a there is a con yeah. Check masses mm -hmm. dot, which uh, is extremely useful because it will calculate the masses independently on what you have included and right. then they would uh, check whatever one halves are not missing or something like this right mm -hmm. so that's, that's one, true. one more check that you, uh, we can use to make sure that the model file is correct it, because indeed. the problem is that LANHEP will still compile I mean it will still give the uh, the output files without giving you the error even if the mass terms are not correct and right. then you put that I'll help and then there are problems right so but it's good that I mean it's for for people that haven't used that uh, before but it's, right. uh, it's good that there is this choice mm -hmm. that indeed yeah all right thanks Dorota. yeah indeed so now I'm going to the folder documents Kuso and then Lanhap 400 then here I am and then I want to compile the MDL file so I was let me go to that MDL file which is here so the ls 
these are the files I have so I was just willing to explain to you this is send.mdl so then I want to execute that file I did not execute that file from here I have to go back to where I was and then I execute using this command look as you see you have an executable file which is this one and then you do this one and then I put the name stand.mdl if you can see here there is no MDL file here in the folder right so none of them no MDL file and then I, once I do this enter it creates so it's giving me an error because I need to say which output I want so I want to generate MDL files for what for Compact is a program that I never use Calcap, Fine Arts or whatever UFO what you want so I want to generate for calcap so I do lhap again minus ca stand dot mdl so let me just increase a little bit the this that's all and then I press enter and just it generated the, these warnings they are not a problem at that moment okay so the point is, is give me a warning because I did not set the PDG number for some particles. So CalCap, depending on the version you're using, requires all particles to have a PDG number. The same thing happens in MathGraph. So you need to have a PDG number. And then this PDG number is, is can be known. Okay, it's easy to know from the PDG data group, you can also find that out. But that's not a problem, you just can put the number in. <coughs> but okay, but these numbers can be found, for instance, in the in the LearnHab page or in the CalcHab page, you, especially in the CalcHab page, you're gonna find the, which PG number should put it. In order to do so, then you have that stand file, that stand.mdl file has to have another assignment. I'm gonna I can explain this in a different uh, lecture because otherwise it's gonna take so long but anyway you can run this without a problem okay as you can see here it used this stand sm text file this sm text file if I go there just cd mdl and g edit sm text and we'll give an S L G edit S M text MDL. Here I am. So that's what it has. It has some set text name for this, for this, for this, for that. So if you want to just include for whatever part you have, you just include them here. These are not super important. You can do that without it. So you just have to to give this the text latex format syntax for the particles you have. That's all. And coupling. Nothing beyond that. So okay, fine. So let me go back to my slide again. And then you have there. So let me, okay. So <coughs> I generated the MDL file. So now let me go back there so I can show you. I generated the MDL file here, right? So in this command line, that's what I did. So let's see if I really indeed generated the MDL file. Let me go back. Remember that I ran that command line within the folder lenhap 400. So if I give an S -L LS, these MDL files are here. See? Var 4. Let me see what else. Particles 4 is here. There are other ones. There are four of them. Okay, so okay, funk 4. These are the files. Then. Four. Okay, Vars. yes. Okay, so I need in VARS 4. So these are the files I want to put in CalCap. So that's what I did. So I explained to you the input file that has the standard model and how to generate this output. So what you do now, and then you take this. MDL files so let's here you can see my screen so let me open a new command line 
so let's see I'm gonna do go to calc have eight here okay so I have I'm going to create a new folder in calc have dot bar mcard directory that's what you do and then I'm going to create a file called Dorota and then I did if I give an ls the file Dorota is there if I go to that file to that folder there you hear these files over there but there is a folder called models if I go to CD models LS these folders are already there so these are the standard model versions of the standard model basically okay so if I do this friends I can either remove all of them all these files remove all of them all files extensions with MDL and remove them all see there is none there nothing then I copy from here I copy all these MDL files here to that folder once you do that what would happen is so let me open a new file if you do this what will happen is so let me open one of them uh, CD let me go to CD let's see Alvaro for instance and then I'm gonna this is the file I have okay and then I run calcap execute calcap that's all when I do that instead of standard model C model Alvaro because I already did that thing but for model called modelo Alvaro if I had that for the Dorota it would appear there Dorota that's all and how this name appears here this name appears there because if I go to CD models LS and then open let's see which of these files have Alvaro I guess is the number three G edit uh, funk three any of these files let me see is not this one so let me remember which one are those four maybe I, this is the IDM has IDM already and let me see uh, the five I'm doing this live okay so there's only one missing now is the one the cinema and the two I'm opening which one each one of those files from two. See here, you can see the very first line is Modelo Alvaro CKM equal one, which is exactly the line appeared for me in Calcap. Why did I appear why did I open the funk? It doesn't matter. I just found out that this extension two is the one that has Alvaro. So if I open any of the files which is has two in it if I open this one you have also there in the very first line the name of the model I have the first line should have all the same name and this first name is exactly the name that's going to appear when I go back and I'm in the folder of calcap and run calcap when I here there it is model of so what I've shown to you so far is how to generate files for calcap and where you should include them okay so include them in the files to first create a directory and then you put those MDL files you created in that directory called models that's what you do so if you messed up somewhere some for some reason you did not realize that you messed up for instance like Dorota was saying if for instance if you didn't check for the lecture charge or if you didn't check for the Hermitian terms and then you go to calcap you try to save it won't let you save you will say that there's an error in it there's an electric charge missing wrong there's something wrong with the electric charge the emitting conjugate is not there something is wrong okay for the mass is not one of them so calcap will not spot the mass term but for the electric charge the emitting conjugate still will you will not let me save me so if I press ask to quit the section and press y you will not let me go out.
I can go out because the model is implemented correctly. Okay, so that's what I had to say. And then let me just go back to the very end of the, the talk. And then, okay, I have implemented this. And now let's go back there. Let's say that I want to implement now, create some output for MadGraph. So instead of running that file stand.mdl, LearnHap also has one file inside MDL folder called stand UFO LHAP. If I execute that folder, again it will give me an error asking what I want. So I always have to say what kind of format output I want. I don't want calcap, I don't want compap. Fine arts. I want UFO format because that's what this file is for. So then I execute lhap dash UFO minus UFO and then execute the file and then it gives me this message and gives this folder. So you can see folder stand model fine gauges created. And then I created that folder. So if I go there, learn hap, give an L as that's the folder right there. So there's a folder learn hap called stand mod fine gauge, which is the mod I created. So let me go back. So it created this folder for me once I executed that file, that line. And then it gives me that that folder. That folder has the files, the Python files that MathGraphs needs to run my my program. So these these files contain the standard model. That is one thing. That's all you have. So you, I showed to you how you can generate output files for both CalcHap and LearnHap. For CompHap, I've never used it before, as I said, but it would be easy. So instead of putting here running that stand MDL file with the minus C A I'll just put minus C O nothing else but then for learn hap instead of running this executing this stand dot MDL file I just ex execute this one you might ask what's the difference between this file I just showed stand dot MDL and this one the really main difference is because MadGraph, the UFO files, requires more information. So in the way you really define them are slightly different. So what I'm trying to say, if you know how to implement this one, you will figure out how to understand this one and vice versa. So if you've done this one once, as I just showed you, once you open this file, you're going to understand like exactly what is stated in there. And then you generate the output file. And what do you do? Well, that's what we learned in the previous lecture from Alexandri. What you do is you go to MadGraph here. That's MadGraph there. This file. Okay. CD MadGraph 5. Go there. And inside that folder, MadGraph 5, you have another folder called Models. And then you import the entire folder. You, I created it, which is this one, stand mod fine gauge, into that folder called models. So you just import the entire folder. Differently from CalcHap, CalcHap, I had to create a folder inside models and then just copy the file, which is the same thing, anyways. But this one, you can just import the files and you're there. You're done. Okay? But I have to warn you that is one thing. There's a ongoing bug in LearnHap because if I do exactly what I just told you just import the file to MadGraph for some reason when you try to run MadGraph for that file we will give you an error okay and this error is not clear to me why it's happening so there is currently a, pro a problem with the UFO Files that LearnHap is generating for MadGraph, which I can't figure out what's the reason. So maybe there is one of these Python files which is missing, or there is something else that should be done. I have already contacted 
one of the LANHAP, uh, well, the LANHAP developer, Andre, to, uh, to, ex to explain to me what's going on. And I haven't got the answer yet. Okay, but that's about for now. But I'm sure that soon we'll figure out how to use LANHAP and use the LANHAP output for MathGraph and just use your model. Because I've used LANHAP before, because I've done many things with Micromegas and had some complicated models, and Micromegas uses CalcHAP. So I need to generate the MDL file for CalcHAP anyway, so I had to. And then and then I ran Micromegas. But since I'm, I'm already familiar with the LANHAP language, then it would be great if I could still use LANHAP to generate output for MathGraph. So that's the thing that's ongoing at the moment. But that's all I had to say for today. Any further questions? So let me just one second go back there so for the questions nobody yeah, for now I think I have no one okay all right so you, if you have any questions later on just let me know okay 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 all right so have a good one everybody thanks bye